a very good evening welcome to our episode 10 of throwback thursday with dr nikita and i'm dr nikita here your mentor for neat pg and your mentor for next uh, before i proceed with this session can you please give me a quick nod whether the audio visual is all good Hello everyone, is the audio visual all good? I'm waiting for your responses so that I can proceed with this session. Thank you, Sindhu. Yes, good evening everyone. Happy evening, Suganya. Happy evening, Bindu. Very good. I'm glad that all of you have learned to say happy evening, which I also learned recently, right? So, in this today's session, uh, before I proceed with the today's session, uh, I'm sure all of you are all set to crack NEET TG with Unacademy, which is India's largest online learning platform. If not, before it's too late, I, I, I would be happy to see you on this amazing platform where you get daily live classes, you have live polls during the classes, you have structured courses and so many other things. So I am hoping to see you all very, very soon on the platform if you are not there yet right so our today's session is numericals and physiology long time we have not done mathematics so i thought let's have some change in our uh, routine studies it's been very long that even i have not done any mathematics but yes mathematics was one of my favorite subjects right so we had a quiz yesterday on a telegram group and we had quite a good number of students uh, who participated in the quiz so we have also shared the pdf of questions so that it becomes easy for you to have a look at the question to make the notes alongside with the session if not you can download the pdf from our telegram group either my telegram group dr nikita's right sign apps or the unacademy need pg telegram group please download the pdf as and when we are discussing this session please make notes alongside that's the whole purpose of sharing the pdf right so, and yes, before I forget to tell you, tonight, 10 p.m., uh, so you will have, we had AIMS PG today. We are waiting to get, you know, uh, to know how the exam was. As much as you are waiting, we are also waiting. And we will help you in that process of understanding how the AIMS PG today was. What was the difficulty level of the questions? What can you expect in the future exams and all those things? I will be sharing the insights with you tonight, 10 p.m. So make sure you attend the session. It's again on this YouTube channel, 10 p.m. live the AIMS PG 2020 detailed paper analysis all right so without any further delay let's start with our question number one I'm sure all of you have the PDF right so the first question is this is a very very important point if the total body water is 60% of body weight and measures 48 liters calculate the plasma volume let me see how many of you get it right Okay, if the total body water is 60% of body weight and measures 48 liters, what do you think would be the plasma volume? Yes, anyone? Absolutely right, Anne Lee Suganya, very good. Wow, Sindhu, I'm glad that you attended the exam. So Sindhu says that, hi, ma'am, I would like to say that most of the questions are from your classes. Could answer without any doubt from topics which you have taught. That brings a big smile on my face, Sindhu. Thank you for that feedback. I would definitely like to reach out to you to know more about today's exam, right? So yes, the correct answer is 4 liters. Before I dive into the details of this question, this is something that we all should know, the body fluid compartments, okay? So total body water is how much percentage of the body weight? It is 60%. I'm sure we all are aware of the 60, 40, 20 rule, right? We know the 60, 40, 20 rule. What is 60? 60 is your total body water. So in total body water, basically you have ECF plus ICF, which makes a total body water. So what do you think is 40? 40% 40 is ICF or 40% is ECF? What is it? 40% is ICF and 20% is ECF, right? So remember, you can also remember it with the mnemonic tie. Okay, so the 60, 40, 20 rule is for total body water, ICF and ECF. Many times this is very common site where we get confused whether ECF is 40 or ICF is 40. So remember it is 
Thai. Okay, remember this is Thai. I am sure students who have attended my sessions also know that Thai stands for the triad of which other condition. This is the triad of which other condition? Yes, this is, you know, I, I have this habit of jumping from one subject, one topic to other topic. Yes, anyone, students like Sindhu, if you are there and you have attended the sessions, I'm sure you would remember. Thai is the triad, the mnemonic for which condition? Yes, very good, Shasha, very good, Sindhu. Yes, Bhivam, very good. It is Viscott Eldritch syndrome. I discussed in the recent session also. So, thrombocytopenia, infections, and eczema, that is Viscott. So, remember that tie also for your body fluid compartment. It is 60, 40, 20. All right. So, now, so this is 60%. So, ECF is 20% of body weight and ICF is 40% of body weight. Now, ECF again is composed of, it is divided into plasma and interstitial fluid. What do you think? Plasma is equal to what proportion of ECF? Plasma is equal to what proportion of ECF? Can someone tell me that? Plasma is how much of ECF? No, no. What proportion? Basically, 5% is, yes, of the total body water. Yes, it is one fourth. Yes. So, one fourth of ECF is plasma. So, the remaining three fourth is interstitial fluid. Again, remember here your eye, the interstitial fluid is, is at a higher volume than plasma. Like your ICF is more than ECF in quantity. Similarly, interstitial fluid is more than plasma. So, remember that your eye wala, that is ICF and interstitial fluid, they form the majority. I mean, in the proportions. Okay. So, ECF is 20%. That means how much of the total body water? It is one third, 20 upon 60. And ICF becomes two third, right? ICF becomes two third. So now if I ask you an indirect question, let me see how many of you are good at mathematics. How many of you remember that? Plasma is equal to what proportion of total body water? Let me see how many of you answer this. Plasma is equal to how much percentage, how much proportion of total body water? Options are one fourth, one third, one tenth, one twelfth. These are your options. Tell me. Plasma is how much of total body water? Anyone? Wow, I have people who are very good at mathematics here. Absolutely right. It is one twelfth. Why one twelfth? Because plasma is one fourth of ECF and ECF itself is one third of total body water. So that makes it one twelfth of total body water, right? So now we have derived the equation that plasma is one twelfth of total body water. So that is what we have to calculate here. So plasma volume is one twelfth of total body water. And you know that total body water given here is 48 liters. So one twelfth of 48 liters that is equal to 4 liters. So that is the correct answer here. Is it clear with everyone? Why is the answer 4 liters? So in this question, if we have to divide 48 liters is total body water. ECF would be how much? One third. So one third of 48 is how much? 16. ICF will be remaining. Remaining will be ICF. So that would be 32. Now again in ECF, we said we have plasma and interstitial fluid. One fourth is plasma, so four liters and remaining 12 liters will be interstitial fluid. So these are the calculations that you should know. Is everyone clear with the calculations? Right? Absolutely great. Now, if I ask you, what, what is the test that we do to measure the plasma volume? Which test do we do to measure the plasma volume? D2O, H2O, inulin test, sucrose test, like that, which test we do for plasma volume? So remember that Ivan's blue test and your albumin, albumin tagged with uh, iodine 125. These are the tests which are done for plasma. We know that albumin is present in the plasma. So albumin will be done for plasma. So remember Ivan's blue and albumin. These are the tests for these are the tests for plasma. Let's move to the next question, right? Now the next question, now let me see how many of you get it right out of, out, after so much mathematics, how many of you get it right? If the total body water is 60% of body weight and measures 30 liters, calculate ECF and ICF respectively. 
so total is 30 liters how much is ecf how much is icf yes very good so at least you can rule out the options here you know if you have very very less time in the exam and you know you are confused mathematics nahi samajh mein aa hai exam hall mein at least try ruling out the options you know that ecf and icf which is more icf is more so your option 20 liters 10 liters is out because ecf cannot be more than icf icf has to be more your option 18 liters and 12 liters is out because ecf ECF is less than ICF, right? So either it has to be 10, 20 or it has to be 12 and 18. And we know that ECF is one third, ICF is two third. So one third of 30, that means 10 liters, remaining 20 liters will be ICF. Is it clear with everyone? So ECF will be 10 liters, ICF will be 20 liters. Then again, how much would be the plasma here and how much would be the interstitial fluid? Anyone, how much would be the plasma volume in this case? What do you think? How much will be the plasma volume? Wow, Vivam, very good. You seem to be very good in mathematics. So it is one fourth of ECF, one fourth of 10, that is 2.5 liters. Very good. So we all are doing amazing brain exercises. Very good. So 2.5 is plasma, remaining 7.5 becomes your interstitial fluid. Now, out of all these body fluid compartments, can you tell me which are the ones which cannot be measured directly? Like we said, Ivan's blue is for plasma, D2O is for total body water. Which are the ones which cannot be measured directly? Which are the two volumes which cannot be measured directly? Yes? ICF and interstitial very good udayan bhattacharya very good so uh, this this there's a trick to remember that remember indirectly okay so which are the ones which are measured indirectly but not directly matlab indirectly so indirectly i wale jo do fluid compartments hai that is in, uh, intracellular fluid and interstitial fluid so remember the two eyes cannot be measured directly the two eyes are measured indirectly icf is calculated we know by total body water minus ecf interstitial fluid is calculated by ecf minus plasma volume right so remember the two eyes are measured indirectly now let us go to the next question a 60 kg adult has you know i would suggest you when you have numericals like this the first thing that you should read is the last line so that you know what, you know, your brain starts uh, you know, re revising what formula am I, you know, using. So what is the total blood volume? That is what you have to calculate. What has been given is the weight of the patient. Hematocrit is 30 and plasma volume is 3.5. So now you have to calculate total blood volume. So do you know any formula for total blood volume? Yes, we know the formula is plasma volume. Okay, plasma volume divided by 1 minus hematocrit. Okay, so please remember this is the formula which is to be used. So what is, what is the plasma volume? Plasma volume is 3.5 upon 1 minus hematocrit. Now 1 minus hematocrit you will not write as 30. It is actually 30%. Percent, percent means divided by 100. 30% means 0.3, right? So we will write it as 1 minus 0.3. So that is equal to 3.5 divide, uh, divided by 0.7. So that is 5 liters, right? That is 5 liters, okay? That is why the answer is C. That means it is 5 liters. Is it clear with everyone? So the this is the formula that you have to remember. I would highly suggest you that for numericals, Keep all your formulas at one place from all the systems, whether be it minute ventilation, alveolar ventilation, dead space calculation, blood volume calculation, ECF, ICF calculation. All your formulas should be together at one place so that you can revise them one day before the exam. Use that strategy to score maximum in numericals. All right. Let's go to the next question. Calculate the alveolar ventilation if the respiratory rate is 20 per minute and the tidal volume is 500 ml. What do you think is the answer to this? Calculate the alveolar ventilation. Hmm. 
Yes, very good. So we have some mathematics prodigies here. Very good. So uh, these questions which you get in your exam based on ventilation, either they ask you minute ventilation or they ask you uh, alveolar ventilation. Okay, so they ask you minute ventilation or alveolar ventilation. And we know that the units for this is liters per minute. Okay, it is liters per minute. Now, when I say minute ventilation, that means in one minute, how much air is being exchanged? So, that would be basically tidal volume. So, in one breath, it is tidal volume which is exchanged. So, I want to know if it is tidal volume per breath. So, I will need to know how many breaths are there in one minute, in two breaths per minute. Okay. Is it clear with everyone? So for minute ventilation, it is tidal volume into breath per minute. For alveolar ventilation, because alveoli, not all the air reaches the alveoli. Some is the dead space. So for alveolar ventilation, not the minute ventilation. For alveolar, we need to minus the dead space from the tidal volume. So for alveolar ventilation, it is tidal volume minus the dead space volume then into breaths per minute. Is this clear with everyone? Please do not rectify the formulas. It will not help you in the long game. You need to understand the terms. Minute ventilation means how much ventilation is in one minute. So it is not asking you that alveolar is or dead space. Hai. To total rega. Total is your tidal volume. Alveolar means how much ventilation is in the alveolar. So you have to subtract the dead space from tidal volume. So that is why the answer in this question, alveolar ventilation is being asked. So tidal volume given is 500, dead space if not given in the question, take it as 150 into respiratory rate, breaths per minute, respiratory rate is 20. So that is 350 into 20, that is equal to 7000 ml per minute, which is equal to 7 liters per minute, all right, that is equal to 7 liters per minute. You have to be really quick, okay. Uh, no, Shashank, I don't think these are actually very difficult to solve in mind without paper. This is easy. You can calculate it. Tidal volume 500, 500 minus 150. That space is 350. Okay, so this is 350 into 20. That is 7. 35 into 2 is 7. So you get the answer which is 7. Okay. Now let's see how many of you get it right. Calculate the minute ventilation if respiratory rate is 20 and tidal volume is 500. Okay, this is asking minute ventilation. Ki per minute kitna ventilation ho raha hai. Yes, so you can calculate it directly in the mind 500 into 20, tidal volume into respiratory rate. So 500 into 20 is 10. We know it is 10. That is why the answer becomes directly 10 liters per minute. Okay, so minute ventilation we said is tidal volume into respiratory rate 500 into 20. That is your how much? 10,000 ml per minute. You do not need to calculate all of this. You just know that it is 10, right? So you will come to the answer very quickly. Is it clear? So please remember minute ventilation is total. That is tidal volume into respiratory rate. And alveolar ventilation means subtract the dead space from the tidal volume. If it is mentioned dead space, use that value. If not mentioned, use 150 as the dead space volume. All right? Next question, normal VD by VT is, the PDFs which you have, we'll make a correction there, I'll let you know. Normal VD, that is dead space by tidal volume ratio is, we just said VD by VT, dead space is 150, tidal volume ka normal value is 500. So this is 15 upon 50, that is 0 0.3. The correct answer is 0 0.3. Please make a correction in your PDFs. It was a printing mistake there. It is written as 3. Please make it 0 0.3. Okay. So it is 15 upon 50 which is equal to 0 0.3. Right. That is equal to 0 0.3. Is it clear with everyone? Yes, Manogya, that's what I said. It was a uh, uh, technical error, typing error from our side. The answer should be 0 0.3. Can you tell me in percentage how much would it be? 0 0.3 matlab kitna percent? Basic mathematics. Sir, 
Sai, Yash, Uday and Harshita, very good. So, I am glad you remember the basics. So, it is 0 0.3 into 100, matlab 30%, right? So, they can ask you as ratio or they can ask you as percentage also. So, that is why knowing some mathematics is always good. Let's see the next question, okay? I am not reading this question. I am giving you time to solve this question. Who gets this right first? Let us see. Anirudha, you will get this PDF from our Telegram group, either my Telegram group, Dr. Nikita's Rad Synapse or the Unacademy Need PG Telegram group. If not, just drop me a message on Telegram. I will again share the PDF. Yes, what do you think is the answer? Very good. The first one to get it right, Madhu, Madhu Nisha, Suganya. Very good. It is C. Uh, Harshita, it is not A, it is C. That is why I always say use this cheat code. Use this cheat code. Whenever you have lengthy questions in your exam, always read from the last line. Last line has the major clue. So the last line, you know, such a lengthy question, so many values. The last line, let us read that. What is the rate of alveolar ventilation? Whenever you get any question on alveolar ventilation, you know that what do you need to calculate alveolar ventilation is tidal volume minus dead space. So you need tidal volume, you need dead space and you multiply it by respiratory rate. So your mind should be very focused on these three values itself. Now is the tidal volume given in the question? Then I will try to hunt the tidal volume whether it's given or not. Yes, the tidal volume is given. Is the dead space given in this question? Can I search for dead space? Yes, I, I got the dead space here. Okay, the dead space is also given. Next I need is respiratory rate. It is also mentioned in the question. So basically all the values have been given. So I need not worry about any other values. I need not worry about any other values. It is just to confuse the candidate in the exam by the examiner. These are some of the tricks used by the examiners, right? So we have the three values. So 500 minus 200, 300, 300 into 18. We know 18 into 3 is 54. So 54, so the answer is C. So you can see that we can calculate even without using pen and paper. Generally in your exam, if you don't have the rough paper, the numericals which you get, you know, they would be a round figure which would be easy to calculate. So 500 minus 200, 300 into 18, 3 into 18 is 54. So we know that it is 5.4 liters per minute. All right. So uh, now if I ask you here, what is the, from this question, calculate the residual volume. Okay. Now I change the question. These are, this is how the questions are repeated. Next time, rather than asking what is the rate of alveolar ventilation, the question is what is the residual volume? What do you think would be the answer to that? What would be the residual volume in this case? Uh, Udayan, why 4 liters? Why 4 liters? I can see there's confusion here. Why 4 liters? Yes, the first one to get it right. Very good. Bivam seems to be good at maths, as I said. Now your residual volume. So you have been given functional residual capacity. You have been given expiratory reserve volume. We know that in the spirometry, this is the normal one. You have this graph, right? You have this graph. What remains in the lungs after normal respiration? That is FRC. And functional residual capacity means it is ERV, expiratory reserve volume, plus residual volume. So you have been given FRC is 2 liters, expiratory reserve volume is 1.5 liters. So obviously your residual volume will be 2 minus 1.5 that is equal to 0 0.5 liters. Is it clear? Yes, very good. Rishikant ready. It is, it is FRC minus ERV. Udayan, it is not TLC minus FRC. Okay. It is not TLC minus FRC. What is TLC minus FRC? Anyone? What is TLC minus FRC?
I have taken this session on spirometry in detail with all the tricks. I have shared all of these there already. Yes, very good, Bibam. Very correct. It is your inspiratory capacity. I've I've covered this all, so I'm not going into the details here. Make sure you watch that session of spirometry on an academy. You'll get all your doubts cleared. Okay. Yes, TLC minus FRC is inspiratory capacity, and FRC minus ERV is your residual volume. Let's see the next question now. Calculate clearance of a substance if its plasma concentration is 5 milligram per liters, urine concentration is 50 milligram per liters, and urine flow is 4 ml per minute. What do you think is the answer to this? Very good, Sylvester Jones. Uh, Shakshi, Harshita, yes, it is 40, 40. Now, I hope all of you know the formula for clearance, right? Clearance is you have to keep it revising UV upon P. I remember it because I've always learned it like clearance is UV by P. UV by P, I, you know, keep on chanting the formulas. You will remember them. So UV upon P. Now, U means your urine may concentration. V means urine flow rate and P means plasma concentration. Okay, it is plasma concentration. So urine concentration is 50, urine flow is 4, so 50 into 4 and plasma concentration is 5. So 50 upon uh, 50 into 4 divided by 5, so that becomes 40, 200 by 5, that is 40 ml per minute. You can also be asked a question only on this formula that clearance is equal to UV upon P or UP upon V or it is U upon VP, okay? So when you get formulas, you know, you have questions like this. The trick to solve this questions is, you know, uh, do it on the basis of units like this is urine concentration so we know urine concentration would be somewhere like you know say milligram per ml or milligram per liter v is urine flow rate flow kaise lega? flow would be as ml per minute okay so milligram per liter into ml per minute divided by plasma concentration again will be milligram per liter so this milligram per liter cancels this milligram per liter and you get your answer in ml per minute which is your unit for clearance also which is your unit for clearance so many times what happens in the exam if you're not able to remember the formula use this units basically to see what formula can i use when you know that clearance is has to be in ml per minute that means some value which is in ml per minute will come in the numerator right it will come in the numerator so in the numerator you have urine flow so with urine flow will come urine concentration right with urine flow will come urine concentration so automatically the third one the plasma concentration will go in the denominator is it clear so because it has to be in ml per minute the urine flow will come in the numerator with urine flow will come urine concentration so the remaining one will go in the denominator and that is what is the formula for clearance okay that is what is the formula for clearance i hope you are understanding some of this mathematics right so that was the question that we saw so these were the quick questions that we had let us quickly revise the formulas that we saw so we saw the first mnemonic for total body water tie so you have 60 40 and 20 rule even in this ecf which is one fourth is plasma and three fourth is interstitial fluid in which compartment does your uh, plural fluid come plural fluid comes in which compartment anyone out of all these compartments in which compartments is the plural fluid included yes so plural fluid definitely is not a intracellular fluid it is a extracellular fluid even in extracellular fluid it is not the plasma it is not the interstitial fluid it is your 
ट्रांस सेल्युलर फ्लूड ओके इट्स योर ट्रांस सेल्युलर फ्लूड सो ऑल योर फ्लूड इन द कैविटीज प्लूरल फ्लूड पेरिटोनियल फ्लूड पेरिकार्डियल सी एस एफ ऑल दीज कम इन योर ट्रांस सेल्युलर फ्लूड विच इज अ वेरी स्मॉल प्रपोर्शन ऑफ ई सी एफ सो रिमेंबर दैट ई सी एफ ऑल्सो हैज ट्रांस सेल्युलर ऑल राइट द नेक्स्ट फॉर्मूला वट वॉज द नेक्स्ट फॉर्मूला दैट वी सॉ टोटल ब्लड वॉल्यूम इट इज प्लाज्मा वॉल्यूम अपॉन वन माइनस हिमाटोक्रिट what was the next formula that we saw in respiratory ones we saw minute ventilation is tidal volume into respiratory rate then we saw alveolar ventilation alveoli so minus the dead space volume into respiratory rate right and then we saw the last one which you had which was the last one clearance is equal to uv upon p clearance is equal to uv upon p so have this list of formulas with you at one place as i said it would be easy to solve the questions later on all right so as i said i'm hoping to see you all soon on an academy platform if you're not there tonight 10 pm i'll see you with today's aims pg analysis like what were the type of questions how did the students find the exam what can you expect in the upcoming exams all of those we will discuss again on this youtube channel live session 10 pm okay and yes thank you that's all for today so that was some of the brain exercises that we had today hope you enjoyed it we will have many more such quizzes on our telegram group and we'll have the discussion in the throwback thursdays and many more sessions on an academy so that's all for today goodbye take care keep studying keep revising and keep winning goodbye until next time